With the release of Alder Lake, Intel has put their cards on the table. And they look really good, beating Zen 3 in gaming and offering really competitive performance when it comes to applications. But Zen 3D is already looming on the horizon. A official announcement could come as early as CES of 2022, which is in less than 6 weeks from now. I've already made an in-depth video about the design of Zen 3D, so in this video I'm going to focus on a straight up comparison for Zen 3D versus Alder Lake. We're going to look at their physical properties, at the platforms they run on, and of course, we're going to talk about possible performance. What makes this comparison so interesting is that both Alder Lake and Zen 3D use novel design approaches. With Alder Lake, Intel introduced the hybrid design into the desktop, combining performance and efficiency cores into a single CPU. And with Zen 3D, AMD will expand on their ongoing chiplet design. And for the first time, they're going to stack chiplets on top of chiplets. This 3D recache call technology, which by the way is now a trademark, enables AMD to greatly increase the L3 cache size of the current Zen 3 architecture. And by greatly, I don't mean a 50% or even 100% increase. A single Zen 3 chiplet will go from 32 megabytes of L3 cache to a staggering 96 megabytes. And that's only a single chiplet. For dual chiplet CPUs, we will go from 64 megabytes to 192 megabytes of L3 cache. Let's start by taking a look at how All the Lake and Zen 3D compare in straight up numbers. Comparing the process nodes, Intel has actually caught up to AMD or rather TSMC when it comes to manufacturing. As we know, numbers don't mean that much anyways when it comes to really small nanometer designs. The new Intel 7 node, formerly known as 10 nanometer enhanced superfin, should be really comparable to TSMC's N7 process. The new 3D cache chiplets will also be produced in TSMC's N7, but they will use cache optimized libraries to increase transistor density when it comes to how much cache you can put on a single chip. It's also very likely that AMD will continue to use the same Zen 3 based I.O. die like they have been before, and this is still being produced by Global Foundries in their 12 nanometer process. Sadly, Intel didn't announce a official transistor count for Alder Lake yet, and without a transistor density number, it's really hard to guess a exact number. I would really love to know how Olerix stacks up against Zen 3 and Zen 3D in this regard when it comes to transistor density and die size and transistor count in general. Maybe in the future Intel will give us those numbers and when they do, you can be certain that there will be a video about it on this channel. When comparing die size, you have to take into account that Alder Lake includes integrated graphics and on the other hand, the dual chiplet CPUs from AMD like the 5900 or 5950X use twice the chiplets when it comes to CPU and 3D recaches. On the other hand, the IO die is still manufactured in 12 nanometer, so it's pretty large compared to what would be possible on a smaller node. Both architectures offer up to 16 cores, but as you know, Alder Lake has split them up into 8 performance cores that also offer hyper threading and 8 efficiency cores which do not offer hyperthreading. So in total that's 16 cores and 24 threads. Zen 3D will most likely offer the same amount of cores as Zen 3, so 16 cores with 32 threads in total. As you can see, the big difference is the L3 cache size. All Lake offers up to 30 megabytes of L3 cache, a single Zen 3 chiplet has 32 megabytes, and Zen 3D will more than double this to 96 megabytes per chiplet. So again, if you're taking a dual chiplet CPUs into account, you have to double these numbers. That's three to six times the amount of L3 cache that All the Lake offers. We don't know the clock speeds of Zen 3D yet, but it's very likely that it will clock about the same as Zen 3. When it comes to power usage, Zen 3 still has the advantage over Alder Lake, and I think this won't change with Zen 3D. If anything, a larger L3 cache decreases memory access and further increases power efficiency. But how can we compare Alder Lake and Zen 3D in performance when there aren't any Zen 3D performance benchmarks out yet? Well, it's actually easier than you think because we have the Auto Lake performance numbers and we have the Zen 3 performance numbers. And if you remember at Computex of this year, AMD gave us early performance numbers for Zen 3D. So all we have to do now is to take a look at how Auto Lake compares to Zen 3 and then add the extra Zen 3D performance on top of it. It's not like Zen 3D will come with an entire new architecture, so I don't think we will see any big surprises. The German website 3D Center wrote a very comprehensive post-launch Auto Lake analysis where they looked at dozens and dozens of reviews, accumulated all the data and then built a 
aggregate score. I put a link to the article down in the description below. And although it's in German, I highly recommend you check it out. They have a built-in Google Translate into their page and they really did some amazing work there. The results they came up with show a pretty clear picture. The i9-12900K is about 11% faster in gaming than the fastest Zen 3 based CPUs. And when it comes to application performance, it's almost a wash between those two. And again, these are the accurate numbers of dozens and dozens of reviews. So these numbers are as good as it gets. So now that we established how all the lake performs versus Zen 3, let's take a look at how Zen 3D is supposed to perform versus Zen 3. And you don't have to take my word for it. I'm gonna let Liza Sue do the talking. In fact, when you look across many of today's games, they have intense demands for the PC memory subsystem. And they get much faster when you bring lots of memory close to the processor. If you look across a number of popular game titles with this Vcache technology, we're seeing an average improvement of 15% at 1080p. Now just think about that. That's 15%, which is an entire architectural generation's worth of gaming performance just from the 3D Vcache technology. As you just heard, AMD is claiming an average 15% performance uplift when it comes to gaming. Of course, these numbers are official AMD numbers, and we all know to bench for weight marks. But if you consider the recent announcement from AMD, I'm pretty sure they are coming pretty close to what we will see with independent reviews. Maybe they're more on the positive side, but it's very unlikely that they are far off. Based off the numbers AMD presented, I think that most independent reviews will show a performance uplift of around 10 to 15% with the 15% AMD gave us being more of the upper limit. And if we take those 10 to 15% and add them on top of Zen 3, and we know that a 12900K outperforms the fastest Zen 3 CPUs by about 11% when it comes to gaming, you can already guess where Zen 3D will land. Based on these numbers, we can predict that the performance will be pretty close, like head to head close. Some games really love L3 cache and they might perform a lot better with Zen 3D. Others might not react at all because they don't care that much. Games like Age of Empires 4, which are single threaded in 2021, probably will still run faster on all the lake. And I think it takes a little bit more time to actually figure out how the whole performance and efficiency course will play out in gaming in the future. So I think all the lake might be able to gain a little bit more performance over time, like we've seen with Zen 2 before when it came to Windows schedule patches. But in the end, I really think that that the competition will be head to head and actually will turn out really close. Applications usually don't care that much about L3 cache and they don't benefit as much as gaming. But on average, I think we can still expect a let's say 5% performance increase when it comes to applications. And since Zen 3D and Alder Lake are really close when it comes to application performance, and if Zen 3D actually gains 5% on Zen 3, I think it's safe to say that in the end, Zen 3D will take the application performance crown back, although probably not by a huge margin. All in all, I think Alder Lake and Zen 3D will be really evenly matched. If you think otherwise, I would like to hear your opinion. Write me something down in the comments below. It's always interesting to read different points of views, especially when it comes to guessing the performance of upcoming products. So now that we estimated the approximate performance, which one should you get, Auto Lake or Zen 3D? In the end, I think it all comes down to the platform and the price, of course. Zen will definitely be supported on X570 and B550 boards. And I personally think that BIOS updates for X470 and B450 are also really likely. AMD already tried to restrict Zen 3 on specific motherboards and there was a huge consumer backlash. I don't think they will try it again. And on top of that, Zen 3D is basically just a Zen 3 CPU with a larger L3 cache. So there's actually no reason why it shouldn't work on existing motherboards that already support Zen 3. Fingers crossed that AMD doesn't start there. Oh no, the biases are too big shenanigans again. So if you run a Zen 2 or older Zen based CPU on a compatible AM4 motherboard, your upgrade path is really clear. Zen 3D will be a drop-in upgrade and it would be a lot more expensive to switch to Alder Lake. But if you're building a new system from scratch, Alder Lake might be the better option. With Alder Lake, Intel just made the switch to the new LGA 1700 socket and their new 600 series motherboards. And if you're buying Elder Lake in January, you might get lucky and the new Intel B660 motherboards might be out by then. So you could have 
cheaper access and instead of buying an expensive C690 motherboard, you could go for a more cost efficient alternative. Buying a new platform also gives you more upgrade options for the future, so it's pretty certain that Raptor Lake will run on LGA 1700 and there's also a good chance that Meteor Lake might too. On top of that, all the lake already supports PCI Expression 5 and while it might not have any performance impacts right now, if you keep your systems for 4 to 5 years, maybe by that time you have new graphics cards with PCI Expression 5 support and you might see actual benefits from it. So to recap, if you already have a compatible AIM4 motherboard, it's pretty clear that you should go with Zen 3D. But if you're buying from scratch, all the like might be the better choice for you. We also still don't know how AMD will call their new Zen 3D CPUs. I think Ryzen 6000 for desktop might be a good guess, but they could also choose something like Ryzen 9 5900X 3D edition or what else. Let me know what you think AMD will call the Zen 3D CPUs. And if you're planning on upgrading, maybe we can combine a RX 6900 with a Ryzen 9 6900 in the future. In any case, CES can come fast enough. And I'm already really excited to see if my performance estimates turn out to be true or if there is a surprise one way or the other. As always, if you found this video interesting, please leave me a like, subscribe for more content and see you in the next video.